Hi everyone. Last night I was sitting in the hot tub and uh, looking up at the sky and got some northern lights and uh, I was really in awe. We don't get the kind of northern lights, the really spectacular colorful ones that they get in the farther north up in Alaska of course. Uh, we get sort of more muted and they're just white and they're very very rare. But it was really cool and actually at first I wasn't sure if it was moonbeams as the moon was uh, coming up over the mountain behind me or if it was northern light. So I had to wait a little bit and pretty sure, pretty soon I could see the telltale curvature of, the, uh, of that solar wind as it crossed across the sky and sort of every once in a while would dart out unlike what you would see of a, you know, a slowly rising moon as it... Uh, as it, the, the rays of light from the moon would go between trees and, and various parts of the landscape. These were more fluid. And I was just really in awe. And it got me thinking of a few things that have inspired me as of late. And they sort of are both uh, on either end of the spectrum. From sort of the hard skepticism and learning about our, our natural world. And then on the other side, a little bit, a little bit more into the, uh, the esoteric, the... Uh, the schools of thought and the philosophies that don't really have a lot of empirical evidence behind them and sort of the balance between the two that I, I feel like makes for a really energetic, youthful experience um, in this world. So specifically, two videos. One by the realistic nihilist recently on unilateral skepticism where he talked about how it's very important to, uh, to be skeptical or to submit your own worldview, your own core beliefs to the same rigor that you would any of your opposition and that it's very easy to actually in fact lie to yourself uh, if you don't do that and I think it is important I think especially when you're dealing with uh, any kind of a debate or discussion I think it's also helpful to avoid um, you know the appearance of hypocrisy if you're willing to sort of uh, subject your own viewpoints to that same kind of critiquing and it reminds me of a video I saw recently with Joe Rogan and he was talking about how he's, you know, constantly sort of confronted with people uh, bringing him different conspiracy theories. Hey, man, you got to check out this. Did you hear about this? You know, and he's anymore. He says what he says to people when they come to him with these conspiracy theories that they've really just you clearly have bought into is he says, hey, man, listen, before you come to me with that, take whatever it is. Claim X, whatever X is. Please, before you come to me, do a Google search for X debunked. You know, whatever the claim is, debunked. And I think that's a really great way of getting the message across. Obviously, we can't just take any claim at face value. That you owe it to yourself to avail yourself of that uh, counter argument. That, you know, that at least even if you end up accepting claim X, uh, that you're doing so from a, from a really knowledgeable position, a skeptical position. And... Uh, I think that's fantastic. Now the other video again is sort of on the other side of the spectrum and it's a recent upload by a Philosophical Vlogs entitled I'm a Spiritual Atheist. Now I understand that many a skeptic will run up the opposite direction with their hair on fire at the term spiritual but I kind of understand what he's getting at here. I was raised in a sort of a, a hippie environment if you will and a lot of the people that surrounded me were people who sought alternative explanations and, and other philosophies on the explanation of our existence and the nature of reality. And uh, a good deal of those I had actually investigated myself and they contained a lot of gems, a lot of things that I use to this day in interpersonal relationships and most, most importantly I think for self-esteem. Now I'll probably be doing a video on self-esteem in the future. I may have some things I think I can share for any of you who suffer from self-esteem issues. But getting back to the gems, I think that there's a, there's a balance to be struck here, somewhere between the empirical and, and the, the philosophical, the esoteric, the, the, uh, the, the other disciplines, the other thought, schools of thought. Um, because I, I don't think it's, it, it's very skeptical to, to completely renounce or denounce any of these um, other schools of thought without without evidence that they don't exist, you know, the, ne the whole negative claim scenario. And I'm not suggesting that anyone else should be on a spiritual path, should be on a, uh, you know, should be researching Buddhism and uh, reading Deepak Chopra and, and, and uh, investigating uh, Seth Speaks. Um, I'm not even on that path 
presently myself. I've, I've investigated those things, and I'm sort of satisfied with what I've gleaned from them. But as Philosophical Vlogs said, which I think is really great, is he said, you know, basically, you can't pigeonhole me as an atheist. I have, uh, there's other aspects to me, and I don't have to buy... Uh, and you know, a doctrine in its in its entirety to to extract portions of it that make sense to me, that they're meaningful to me, that I can apply in my life, and I think that's really great. So I guess you know what I'm saying here is that I'd like to be sort of a, a wide-eyed skeptic or maybe a wild-eyed skeptic, you know, where where I have that enthusiasm and passion for life, and I'm willing to investigate and look into uh, other areas, even if they are. Uh, sort of more in the in the you know the the spiritual realm, um, and, and see where that takes me, but yet at the same time be a skeptic and be skeptical of the claims. Uh, I you know I'll probably never completely shut myself off to the possibility of the supernatural. I'm just skeptical of the claims, and you know I'll probably never stop hoping that uh, my sentience will continue on after this meat puppet shuts down. I'm just very skeptical of people's claims that, that they know um, that, that that is the case. And I think that's a good way to live. I've said in videos previous that uh, I think this life is for living and to s sort of forfeit or sacrifice any portion of this life for some perceived benefit or some perceived whatever in another life is, is a real, is a real uh, mistake and it's a real problem. And this sort of gets me back full circle to a few comments that were left on a couple of my videos recently, uh, asking for a little bit of my background. What, why am I on YouTube making videos about religion and the presuppositional apologetic? And to that end, I have made some videos previously. Uh, if you do a search on my channel for a video entitled On This Black Box, there's a little bit of my background there with regards to religion and why I'm on YouTube. Uh, and more recently, I did a video entitled uh, Man Sets Fire Tone YouTube channel, and I explained a little bit more in there about uh, my history as it relates to self-esteem. But by all means, if you're interested in more, and you'd like a little bit more uh, of how I've gotten to the position that I'm in today, why I hold the beliefs I do, uh, leave a comment below. I'd be more than happy to do another uh, video or two on, on my experience. I've actually led quite an interesting life. Uh, I was thinking about that in the hot tub too. My goodness. Um, and so there may be some, some interesting stories that I can share that also sort of shed some light on... Uh, why I am where I am today, why, I, why I'm on YouTube making videos. And uh, we'll leave it at that for now. Uh, thanks again to The Realistic Nihilist and Philosophical Vlogs for a couple of excellent videos that really discuss almost these ends of a, uh, ends of a spectrum and what is for me a, a real good wake-up call to always try to achieve that balance. Have that wide-eyed wonderment, but be skeptical of specific claims, especially when it's people telling you what you should do. Um, definitely be skeptical of that. Thanks everyone for watching.